The Ryzen 5 5600X is an easy CPU to power, but you can absolutely waste it with the wrong motherboard. Not because it won't boot, but because you'll end up with annoying limits you feel later. No PCIe 4.0 where you need it, not enough M2 storage, weak networking, or a board that forces ugly compromises when you upgrade anything. So in this video, you'll see the best motherboards for the Ryzen 5 5600X across budget builds, full-size upgrades, and small form factor cases. And more importantly, you'll see which boards are worth paying for and which ones only look good on a spec sheet. You can find all links to the suggested motherboards in the description. Let's start with the budget boards for the 5600X. In the budget tier, you're basically trying to avoid two traps. Boards that look cheap now but block upgrades later, and boards that cost more because they bundle stuff you don't need. You're choosing between three types of boards. First are the no Wi-Fi ATX boards that put almost all the money into the basics, chipset, slots, and a clean layout. The standout here is MSI's B550A Pro, because it's consistently discounted and it's the kind of board that simply works. You get a full-size ATX layout without paying extra for wireless features you might not need. What that means for you in real life. Fewer compromises when you add storage, upgrade your GPU, or clean up your cable routing, because you're not paying budget money for a cramped layout or a bare minimum board. Second, if your setup is Wi-Fi first, budget gets trickier, because the cheapest Wi-Fi solutions are often where people end up unhappy later. That's why the Asus Tough Gaming B550 Plus Wi-Fi 2 is my suggestion. It's one of the more common complete budget picks, where you get wireless baked in and you're not immediately planning a Wi-Fi card upgrade. This is the kind of board that works best when you want a straightforward build. Gaming, school, work, general use, without needing extra add-ons. And third, if you're building in a smaller case, Micro ATX usually gives you the best budget flexibility. You avoid the mini ITX price jump, but you still get a compact build that fits a lot of popular cases. If you're trying to keep cost as low as possible while staying on B550, Gigabyte B550M DS3HACR2 is one of the cheapest ways to do that while still having onboard Wi-Fi. Just go in with the right expectations. It's a get the build running and spend the savings on your GPU type of board, not a premium I.O. monster. One detail you should check before clicking buy on any budget Wi-Fi board is what Wi-Fi generation it actually uses. For example, MSI's spec sheet for the B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi lists Wi-Fi AC. That's older wireless than Wi-Fi 6 or 6E. It can still work fine, but in congested areas it can matter. So after comparing the budget options the way you'd actually build a PC, the budget choice that makes the most sense for the most people is the MSI B550A Pro. Pick it if you want the best performance per dollar foundation and don't want to pay extra for features you can add later. The main downside is obvious, no built-in Wi-Fi. If Wi-Fi is a must-have from day one, the best budget but complete alternative is the Asus Tough B550 Plus Wi-Fi 2. And if your case is smaller and the budget is strict, the small build budget alternative is Gigabyte B550M DS3HACR2. Moving on, let's talk about my top picks for the average user with the 5600X. Once you step up from budget, you're not paying for more FPS, you're paying for fewer compromises, better networking, better day-to-day -day usability, and a board that still feels good after you've added drives and peripherals. This is where two boards separate themselves based on what you actually value. If your priority is max features per dollar, the board that makes the most sense is Asus ROG Strix B550F Gaming Wi-Fi 2. When you look at the actual connectivity on this model, you're getting modern wireless and wired networking in one place, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and 2.5 gigabit LAN. That combination matters because it solves the annoying stuff that shows up after the build is done. Stable wireless, fast wired networking if you switch later, and no need to buy extra cards just to modernize the setup. The trade-off is simple. You want this board because it's balanced, not because it's ROG. If it's priced like a sensible step up, it's a great pick. If it's priced like a premium flex, it stops being smart for a 5600X. 
On the other side is the I Wanna Stop Thinking About It board, MSI Mag B550 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi. This one stays a common overall recommendation because it's the kind of platform that feels hard to regret. Solid ATX layout, strong feature balance, and it's widely stocked by major retailers. If you're the type of builder who upgrades parts over time, this is the kind of board you keep while swapping GPU, storage, and even the CPU later on the same socket. So the overall best choice for the average 5600X user, the one that hits the best balance without wasting money, is the Asus ROG Strix B550F Gaming Wi-Fi 2. You're getting modern networking and a well-rounded platform, and that's what prevents wasting the 5600X in the long run. And if you want the fastest buy it once and don't worry ATX alternative, the MSI Mag B550 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi is the upgrade that makes sense, especially if you plan to keep AM4 running for years through a later CPU drop-in. Now, if you're building small form factor, the rules change. Mini ITX boards cost more, so you prioritize something commonly available and widely used. Gigabyte B550i Aorus Pro AX is one of the more common B550 Mini ITX options you'll actually find in retail stock. And if the entire goal is lowest cost ITX, Gigabyte A520i AC is the cheaper entry point. But you treat it as the ticket into an ITX case, not the best features choice.